now we're on the other side of that alder swamp where all of the red maples were stripped around the perimeter and we're in this big this hemlock stand so you can still see through the the trees the alder swamp there's a little brook that starts in here and feeds a larger brook that ultimately feeds into the middle branch of the Westfield River but it starts right in this in this hillside now we're under these hemlocks and these hemlocks provide thermal cover for moose during the summer close access to the the shrubby wetland the alder swamp and as we walk through they provide close access to that hundred acre clear cut that's just a couple hundred meters away up the hill so in with very minimal travel time the moose can be feeding in the clear cut or on the edge of it and then walk down through that mature forest and either in the summertime it might bed in the shade of the mature forest here's a pile of moose scat this is relatively old but we often see really fresh stuff maybe up in the cut around the beaver pond we'll see some fresher stuff but that's old decomposing moose droppings here's a little bit more of this wetland that kind of wraps around this hemlock stand but the hemlocks provide thermal cover in really close proximity to the foraging area that's just on the top of the hill so just through that mature forest you can kind of see a stone wall and then on the other side of the stone wall is where that hundred acre um, basically functional clear cut begins which is full of uh, moose browse species gray birch yellow birch red maple striped maple um, a lot of rubus a lot of blackberry and raspberry some elderberry uh, and then beech as well so things that moose either browse in the winter to eat the woody twigs uh, the beech the moose will strip the leaves and very newest growth in the spring they don't tend to browse on the beach in the winter time but when the new leaves uh, are emerging in in mid to late may uh, there's a short window of time maybe about 10 days or so when they will strip uh, the new beach leaves and just eat those because uh, they're before they harden off they're fairly digestible in that early spring period and we've got a little bit of video that i can show you of the moose doing just that when we're back in class but this this illustrates this concept of interspersion where different habitat elements are arranged in proximity to each other on the landscape to make the travel from one element to the other kind of as, as short as possible, right? Providing all of the moose's habitat needs, whether it's thermal cover, um, water, food, escape cover, if there was an area uh, where there were effective moose predators, um, all of that having it arranged in relatively close proximity um, is kind of the ideal habitat situation. Here's another big old tree. This is a yellow birch that is almost dead. It may even be dead now. For years I'd come in here though and always expect to find, find it being used as a den for something. Uh, either porcupines or fishers yeah now it's mostly dead it's starting to decompose big parts of it have fallen off over the last decade but another for a different species this would be an important habitat element not so much for moose moose are more tuned in here to the thermal cover of the hemlocks to be able to get out of the sun in the summertime or even on hot days in the winter and hot being a relative term so above freezing and sunny in the winter a moose has a very dark coat uh, brown to black and the winter coat on moose and deer species in general when they molt their summer coat their winter coat comes in and the hairs are hollow so they're very good insulators and so a day above freezing in the winter time 
can really put moose and even deer into some thermal stress. So they need, even in winter, they need thermal cover uh, to escape the, the warmest part of the day. They're not gonna be sitting basking in the sun when it's 40 degrees in January. They're gonna be looking for a shady spot like this and then moving about more um, when the temperature cools off. So we'll walk through this swamp a bit and then up into the clear cut and see some more moose sign.